Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is part of a series on the topic of unemployment. Previously, we learned some definitions and formulas related to unemployment. I'll have a link to that in the description below. We learned that unemployment is the situation where individuals are actively seeking work but can't find it. Today, we'll be exploring some of the impacts of unemployment. Let's start with the immediate economic impacts. The first impact to talk about is the opportunity cost involved with unemployment. Think back to the year 11 concept of the PPF, which shows what the economy would look like if we were at full capacity. It's a model to demonstrate the concept of opportunity cost. If we're producing inside the PPF, we're not using our resources to the full potential to maximize output. This is unemployment. Our labor resource is not being used to the full potential, and this represents opportunity cost. Next economic impact is an obvious one. Unemployment causes lower living standards. This is because workers are no longer earning an income and cannot spend to satisfy their wants and needs. This leads to the next point. A fall in spending in turn leads to a fall in income and production, causing further economic decline. It's a contraction in the circular flow of income. Last lesson, I introduced the concept of hysteresis, which is a term used to describe the progression from temporary causes for unemployment to long-term unemployment. Check out that video to find out how this happens. Declining labor market skills can result from people being unemployed for prolonged periods of time. This can happen because workers are not using their skills and may lose expertise. Also, they may miss out on opportunities to update their skills with on-the-job training. Other effects of hysteresis and long-term unemployment include loss of confidence over time and the increased difficulty of being re-employed compared to someone who's recently unemployed due to the attached stigma. Unemployment is also associated with lower wage growth. This is because unemployment usually is caused by falling demand for labor. Just like any other market, when supply exceeds demand, prices will fall. And in this case, this means a fall in wages, or at least lower growth. With this, unemployment can lead to high risks of deflation in the economy. To understand this fully, you'll first need to have an understanding of the causes of inflation. That's what my next videos are going to be about. Here's an explanation anyway. Firstly, when wages are falling, there'll be less wage push inflation. Furthermore, if people are receiving lower incomes, they'll be spending less, so there'll be less demand pool inflation. Another cause for lower inflation is that with higher unemployment, people may default on their loans and sell their assets, such as a homeowner who sells their house because they can no longer pay the mortgage. This causes asset prices to fall, and this will lower inflation. Theoretically, distribution of income will be more unequal with higher inflation, because the first people to be unemployed are usually the lower skilled workers with less bargaining power. With low income earners earning now zero income, the poor get poorer and widen the wage gap. However, this obviously depends on whether high income earners also experience falling incomes. The government budget can also be impacted by the unemployment rate. With high unemployment, governments will receive less tax revenue from income taxes. They'll also increase their expenditure as more unemployed claim unemployment benefits. With an expansionary fiscal stance, the fiscal budget ends up in deficit in the long term, the government would need to use contractionary policies to repay this. Most students would just study these short-term impacts and show strong understanding. But I like to encourage my students to consider some of the long-term impacts or even some of the benefits of unemployment to show a deeper understanding. One benefit that can arise from unemployment is an increase in productivity. Productivity is achieved when we increase output while lowering input costs. Falling wages would mean lower input costs and therefore increased productivity. Unemployment could also incentivize workers to be more competitive and increase their individual productivity. Unemployment could also cause workers to shift from existing workplaces to self-employment, which can lead to more new businesses and innovation in an economy. This leads to increased competition and choice in an economy, and in turn, higher living standards. This could also eventually impact our external stability by increasing our export base and attracting more foreign investments into Australia. Alternatively, Unemployed workers can use their time to retrain and gain updated skills. This leads to increased productivity and occupational mobility, among many other benefits of education. Last but not least, unemployment leads to allocative efficiency. The first workers to be unemployed are usually from industries that are declining due to falling consumer demand or are relatively unproductive. In the long term, these workers will eventually be re-employed in more efficient industries. This shift from inefficient industries to efficient is allocative efficiency. An example is when the unemployment from the declining manufacturing industry was eventually resolved by an increase in employment growth in construction and service industries where there was consumer demand. The syllabus states that we must study some of the social impacts as well as some of the economic impacts. So let's take a look at this. With the unemployed no longer earning an income, they'll have trouble satisfying their wants and needs, ending up in poverty. 
In the face of poverty, they may end up resorting to crime or debt. With a loss of income, there may be an increase in physical health problems. And with job loss and lower quality of life, people may face emotional and mental health issues as well. As mentioned before, unemployment can worsen income inequality. There can be many flaw and social effects of this inequality too, such as increased social class divisions. We'll cover this in more detail when we study income and wealth inequality later in the course. But this brings up a related social issue, which is that unemployment has different effects on particular groups. Here's a list that I've taken from my lesson on income inequality, which looks at various dimensions that we could use to observe income disparities. This list can also be used to observe which groups are the most impacted by unemployment. For example, those in lower skilled occupations and with lower levels of education have less bargaining power and are more likely to be unemployed. Also, youth unemployment is an ongoing issue in Australia, again, because they lack the skills, experience and bargaining power. I hope my explanations and examples have made it easier for you to understand the impacts of unemployment. Next lesson, I'll start looking at inflation. And then once we wrap up inflation, we'll be looking at the relationship between inflation and unemployment. Subscribe to the channel and follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss that. If this video has helped you, please leave a like, comment and share the video too. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easier for you. See you next time.